So in letter 17, screw tape goes into talking about the vice, the vice of gluttony. Now, gluttony can kind of be defined as a habitual uh, excess of, of some sort of pleasure, um, typically thought of as like food, right? And so it's an excess um, of, of, of taking in, uh, you know, too much, too many of food. And, and it's true that, that gluttony can be an excess quantitatively. That I think we readily understand. Someone who eats too much um, or, or drinks too many, right? That that can be gluttonous. But what uh, is pointed out in this letter is that it can also not be quantitative, but actually qualitative, right? So rather than dealing with too much or too many of something, we become excessively particular or excessively picky. That that's what the habitual excess lies in. Uh, it's in our taste, right? So, so what this letter tries to distinguish is that, so yeah, you do have the gluttony of quantity when the amount of what you're consuming is just overdone, right? It's too much ice cream, too many smoked ribs off the grill. But there's also that gluttony, what uh, C.S. Lewis calls the gluttony of delicacy, which is a qualitative uh, gluttony that um, what is overdone is not the amount that you're eating or consuming, but it's rather, rather your taste is being, you know, overdone. Your taste is being exaggerated. It's going to be you become too picky, right? So it's not that you're eating too much ice cream. It's because it's it's when you're being too picky of what ice cream you will eat. You know, like saying, well, I will only eat Haagen-Dazs ice cream or this particular brand. They're the best. And that's all I'll have. And if you don't have it, oh, you know, not for me. Um, right? Or when you're just really particular on the type of smoked ribs that you get, either where, they from, where they're from, what grill they're grilled on, um, what type of wood they're smoked with, um, what type of rub the person uses. Oh, well, if you don't use this rub, or if you don't have cherry wood, or if you don't have this, or if it doesn't come from that place, my favorite barbecue place, then, oh, I'm not going to have any. Um, that can also be uh, well, a gluttonous sort of mentality, a gluttonous state of one's soul. It's not that they're excessive in how much they eat, but they are being excessive in, in their particular taste for what they eat, right? And usually we don't think of this as, well, gluttony, because the, we, we just think of quantity. We think of um, big a lot. We don't even consider when someone is eating very small amounts of something that they can be gluttonous in that, that they can be excessive um, in their taste in that, but indeed they can, right? Um, oh, all I want is this. Um, it has to be this proper thing. Um, well, even though it's all that they want, um, it's actually uh, perhaps a uh, uh, it weighs heavily upon a server or upon someone who's trying to provide for this person, you know. You can think of being a parent trying to um, cook for a child who's a picky eater, you know. And, you know, maybe that's gluttonous, probably not. In the, in the case of a child, their pickiness is probably just because they haven't yet, you know, developed fully. Maybe even their taste buds aren't fully developed. So maybe that mac and cheese is the only thing that really, you know, sings to them. Um, but in the case of an adult, when, you know, you're trying to cook for or entertain an adult, and if the adult uh, just says, you know, oh, I'll have a beer, but I can only have this type of beer. Um, or sure, yeah, I'll have, um, uh, you know, grilled pork, that sounds great, but I hope it's uh, pork loin and not anything else. Uh, that's the only type of meat I eat, you know. Um, it becomes a little bit, well, much. Um, and that also is, well, uh, a lack of a virtue, you know. Uh, that's the lack of the virtue of temperance of being able to find that middle road between eating too much and being so particular that uh, you'll only eat a few uh, sorts of items. And see, screw tape talks about how um, getting one into this particular vice of, of uh, the gluttony of delicacy um, might be different. It might range depending on the, the type of person, the personality, even the different gender. And so 
uh, he proposes that for women, they typically um, will fall into this out of false humility. That they'll, that they'll fall into this by disguising it um, behind, well, thinking of others, of trying to not be a bother on someone. Oh, you don't have to worry about me. All I want is this particular type of tea and just one sugar, you know, and this other little thing. You know, I don't want to be a bother. I'll have something small. Um, or to say, oh, I want the finest, I want the best, but I want that for someone else. Um, I want that for my kids. I want that for uh, my family. Um, it's not about me. It's about them. Um, but still being um, very uh, determined to get, well, precisely um, what they want because they'll have nothing else. Um, and so sometimes we can fall into delicacy out of a false humility. Other times... And this is the one where he talks about, well, for men and perhaps for this patient, we can fall into this uh, type of uh, gluttony of delicacy out of vanity or out of self-pride. It's when we think that, well, we just, well, know the best or we're in the know. Uh, we know that secret place, that secret restaurant that no one else knows about. And that's, that's the only place that you can get ribs or that's the best place for pancakes. And that's the only place that I'll eat a pancake or whatever it might be. Um, when we when we think that, well, kind of we know best. Um, and, you know, I think uh, Screwtape, he says that uh, this particular type of gluttony, uh, this particular type of gluttony of delicacy is actually probably more useful to the demons than is that gluttony of excess or of quantity. Um, and the reason why is because um, he can, he says at the very end of this letter that you can kind of gear an attack on another virtue, the virtue of chastity, by the same sort of mentality. So just like gluttony, which is an excess, um, is here being disguised as actually being temperate. So people who are, um, you know, gluttonous in this delicate way, don't think of themselves as gluttonous. They think of themselves as, well, actually being very quite temperate because they're not eating too much, um, you know, they're not overeating. Um, they're just consuming things from this particular place and that particular place and uh, everything else is just bad. So they think of themselves as being temperate, but really they're not. They're playing into an excess of their own taste. So too, another excess can be disguised as if it is being chaste, right? So uh, the, the way that uh, chastity gets worn down is that it gets falsified. And so uh, what C.S. Lewis says at the end of this letter is that, um, you know, people can be told to, to channel their, their sexual energy into exercise, physical exercise, rather than, um, you know, actually being chaste. Um, and so it's an interesting kind of way of trying to attack a virtue by making us think that we're actually have that virtue when we don't. Um, and that can, be, that can be tricky. We should never think ourselves as virtuous um, and get comfortable thinking that what we have is the fullness of that virtue. Because it's usually when we do, when um, we probably have more to discover to actually have the fullness of that virtue. It's when we become content and think, oh, no, I'm chaste because I'm doing this. Or, oh, no, I'm temperate because I'm doing this. That's usually the time when the demons can kind of come in and say, all right, now we can actually make this person gluttonous or we can actually make this person lustful because they are content with what they think um, their virtue um, uh, is. But we're going to be talking more about virtues as we continue along. So next up will be, well, letter 18.